Okay, at this point, I got you to click on the video. And that's probably because you enjoy one of two things. Deck building roguelikes or Slay the Spire. Or I guess me, but that's a pretty low chance. And don't worry, we're gonna talk about deck building roguelikes and we're going to talk about Slay the Spire because these six roguelikes we're going to talk about are the only overwhelmingly positive rated deck building roguelikes on Steam. And for the next six days, I'm gonna play each one of these deck building roguelikes in a dedicated video on my channel. I'm going to mod them, I'm going to play new demos of them, I'm gonna check out their new updates, and I'm gonna showcase everything that they have to offer in this little celebration of one of my favorite genres, deck building roguelikes. Before we start, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Melon NDS on Reddit who posted these six games in an image about three weeks ago, which is where I got the idea for this week of content, but enough yapping. Let's get started. The first deck building roguelike we're gonna talk about is one that is shockingly not even released yet. This is Die in the Dungeon, an upcoming roguelike game releasing in quarter three of 2024, but they've taken the path that many other games, including one on this list, has taken, and that is releasing multiple prologue versions of the game, extended permanent free demos with a chunk of content to mess around with and kind of get you hyped for the future full release of the game. Die in the Dungeon is a deck building game where your deck is not cards, but instead it's dice. Dice that do certain abilities, they act in certain ways, you manipulate your board, your dice, and you impact enemies to create these masterful combos and chain reactions on your board. It's this brilliant little turn-based puzzle game with a roguelike wrapper around it that leaves you with really crunchy little decisions to make while you jam the dice into holes in your grid, testing certain combinations, and craving that perfect hand that you get in a deck builder to build that perfect board and do the most damage. Die in the Dungeon's Origins, their most recent free release of the game, ended up with uh, over 2,000 95% positive reviews, allowing it to fall into this category of overwhelmingly positive roguelike games. Check out the new demo. There's a new one that's out. Wishlist it. It's gonna be good. Next up, we have two of my favorite games from last year, one of which was a contender for my top 10 games of the year in 2023. Worth a watch if you haven't seen it. First up, we have Cobalt Core, clocking in at 2,396% positive reviews. Cobalt Core is a perfect mix of what FTL would have been if FTL was a deck building roguelike. In Cobalt Core, you take a squad of three heroes into a vast outer space with these intense spaceship battles that leave you calculating multiple moves in advance, like a, a little freaky chess grandmaster of roguelikes. And since each character has its own card set with unique theming and abilities, it makes every run feel drastically different as you're combining and creating synergies between the characters, emphasizing their abilities and exploring the potentials that each trio has. I think what makes the game so brilliant is that yes, it is an extremely mechanically sound deck building roguelike. The card design is simple and the possibilities, decisions, and synergies between all of those cards make it a 90% very positive roguelike. But that extra 6% that brings it into the overwhelmingly positive, legendary roguelike territory is the vibrant and charming characters, interesting lore, lovable enemies, and just straight up good vibes that the game provides. The pixel art style is beautiful, the card designs are simplistic to where the game is extremely approachable for even less advanced roguelike gamers, and the sound design and music is simply some of the best in any game I have ever played. They just launched a huge update with more updates planned in the future, and the game already has a pretty active modding community with some extremely high quality mods. Now's the time to hop in. Do not miss Cobalt Core, you will not regret it. Next to talk about is a brilliant turn-based tactical deck building roguelike with 2,096% positive reviews. This is Shogun Showdown. This amazing little gem takes you back into feudal Japan, where your deck is a set of tiles that allow movements, attacks, and special abilities to defeat enemies on your way to fight the Shogun himself. I'll be honest with you, I have always loved this game. I played the demo a very long time ago, it was a free itch.io version of the game that was, in all seriousness, 
better than most $15 paid games on Steam, and when the full release came, I was so excited to hop into it. They have since added a ton of content in post-release, including a new character, numerous tiles and skills that just make the replayability factor of the game increase. It's just a game that is easy to play. It's difficult to master, and its multiple ascension levels make that a challenge for even the best gamers, but if you've been looking for a new game to sink your teeth into, it's like a perfect, rainy, cozy night game. Check it out. And now we move into the big three. The three games that everybody thinks about when you hear the term deck building roguelike. These should not be a surprise to you in any way, but let's chat about them anyway. First up, we have Monster Train, a 96% positive roguelike with over 17,000 reviews. It mashes deck building with tactics in an absolutely stunning way. You spend your battles on a train, filled with monsters. Yes, it took a lot of meetings to determine the name of the game, I'm sure, but this train is three levels high with locations for you to place your units on each level. Enemies enter on the bottom and they slowly make their way to the top where they try to attack your core. It's a brilliant game as your deck building includes the units you'll be placing on the train, but also spells and one-time use cards that impact your units, buffing them or changing them, as well as attacks that you can curse onto your enemies. It's a perfectly delicate balance between pure deck building and tactical strategy, where player decision making truly shines. And the crazy part is, one of the mechanics I love most about Monster Train is actually not related to this combat at all. It's the upgrade system. After you finish a fight, you get placed onto a branching path, kind of like a, a trolley problem, but nobody dies and both of the paths make you stronger. Each path has different options that increase the level of decision making for the player, and both of them are oftentimes equally good. It just forces the player to really evaluate their run, determine what is best, and then take that path. I just love this game. It's got relatively quick runs, Great deck building, beautiful design, it's just a good game. The crazy thing about Balatro is that the speed in which it essentially obliterated the leaderboard of deck building roguelikes. It was released as multiple demos last year, all that had an adequate enough amount of content to be considered a full game, and upon release this year, it quickly amassed 35,000. 97% overwhelmingly positive reviews. This creative take on roguelike poker has you playing cards from your hand to create poker hands. On the surface, simple. But as you add more and more jokers, these passive item cards that change the way the game is played, the complexity rises and a beautiful poker roguelike is born. While the gameplay loop of Balatro is nothing like gambling except for the hopeless addiction that it creates, I think what helps Balatro be the overwhelmingly positive game is its absolutely stellar design. A simplistic and beautiful style paired with genius sound design and a groovy, catchy soundtrack. It's one of the cleanest and most intuitive games to sit down and play, and the big number component of the game can keep you driving for those huge combos and fun and interesting builds. There's already countless decks and jokers to find and use, but they also have more updates planned for the game, and it has a pretty comprehensive modding community with people doing all kinds of wacky things. I'll see you later this week for some modded Balladro. If you've somehow missed this game, just resolve that immediately and pick it up today. And finally, the game that more or less spawned this entire genre, Slay the Spire. With 135,000 97% positive reviews, it is the grandfather of the genre. Okay, yes, Dream Quest, technically the first deck building roguelike, but Dream Quest, it's, it's its own special beast in its own ways. Slay the Spire, one of my favorite games of all time, it's the most classic take on combining a deck building game with a roguelike style. Four playable characters, each with their own unique and interesting decks, You'll be traversing the spire, fighting enemies, collecting relics, spending energy to create breathtaking combos, fight difficult bosses, and explore all of the secrets that the game holds. There's multiple gameplay design components of Slay the Spire that have proceeded to inspire hundreds of roguelike games. It was one of the first games to introduce that iconic roguelike branching path system that has you choosing the path through the floor that you want to take. 
It also created the idea of the Ascension System, multiple difficult levels that scale with new gameplay ideas and new challenges to make roguelike gamers continue to feel challenged even after they start to master the game. It's just a game with very little flaws. They've proceeded to make a spin-off board game, getting delivered to me sometime in the next month, hopefully, crossing fingers, and it has topped the Board Game Geek charts of 2024 as one of the best board games of the year. They're actively working on a sequel, Slay the Spire 2, releasing in early 2025. They just don't make bad games that have Slay the Spire attached to them. The world is simply a better spot when Slay the Spire can be played. As I mentioned earlier and throughout this video, we're going to be playing each of the games mentioned here this week. We'll be playing Die in the Dungeon's newest demo, some modded Cobalt Core, Slay the Spire, and Balatro. We'll revisit Shogun Showdown's newest updates, and we're going to do a relook at Monster Train, which granted, I have not loaded up in several years. If you're interested in checking any of those videos out, it's a great time to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll also link all of my videos on all of these games in the description down below so you can check them out in full. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you throughout the rest of the week for some deck building gaming. See you then.